So in this video, I'm going to walk through mitosis, which is a copying cell division for eukaryotic cells. We're going to talk about different types of chromosomes and the different forms that they take throughout this process. And then I'm going to try to highlight the major steps of the cell cycle, including interphase, mitosis, and cytokinesis. And I need you to know the, the subphases of interphase as well. So why do mitosis? Well, for us humans, it'd be growth and repair, but for organisms that can asexually reproduce, they might produce their offspring this way too. So um, let's talk about the cell cycle because um, unlike meiosis, mitosis, the, the two cells at the end, the goal is to make two cells. Um, if you're sending one cell through the cell cycle, you get two cells that are identical to that original cell. Um, but we often draw this as a cycle because those two cells can then repeat the steps to make even more cells if necessary. So we've got interphase here, which is uh, by far the longest part of this cell cycle. Um, this right here is mitosis, the second step. So step one, interphase. Step two, mitosis. And they're not really showing cytokinesis here, but it, it immediately follows mitosis. So the three major steps, interphase by far the longest. And then there are subphases of interphase as well. G1 followed by S followed by G2 before you enter mitosis. G0 is a little bit of a special distinction. Sometimes cells um, don't need to divide. It's very expensive to do cell division. And so we might send cells into an early step of interphase that we call G0, where it essentially exits the cell cycle, keeps the DNA unpacked, and then just does regular activity, um, but then might be sent back into the cell cycle if, it, if we end up deciding that we do need to divide. So think about the skin on my hand right now, probably in G0 because there are no cuts, so I don't need to repair any damage currently. All right, um, so let's think about what happens during those major steps. Interphase, I would say that the major steps are just to prepare by making proteins that are needed, grow the cell to be larger if need be, and that's largely what's happening during G1 and G2. Um, and the major event of interphase is to copy all the DNA while it's still unpacked. And that happens during S phase, maybe S for DNA synthesis. We create a whole new copy of DNA um, while it's unpacked. Then in mitosis, we're going to pack it up to organize it, line it up, and then we can split it up equally. And then in cytokinesis, we split up the cell to actually make our separate cells, hopefully with the right amount of DNA inside. So um, we, as I hinted at, there are unpacked versions of DNA and packed up versions of DNA. So um, unpacked, we call it chromatin. Um, sometimes chromosome can be kind of confusing, confusingly used. It, it kind of refers to just any piece of DNA, whether it's packed up or not. So maybe it's in thin chromatin is how I remember chromatin form. Um, when it's loosely packed up, it's sort of accessible to be read and, and, and the genes can be read to make proteins, for example, while it's unpacked. So this is how it exists during interphase, including when a cell's not dividing. But in early mitosis, we wanna pack up that DNA. It's much easier to organize it if it's packed up. So sometimes I kind of tell students, this is like um, packing up your stuff into a suitcase when you go to the airport, because it's much easier just to carry the, the packed up suitcase than just to carry all of your stuff through the airport. Um, so when we first see the DNA all packed up, we actually see it as an X. And an X is just a piece of DNA and its exact copy temporarily tied together. And so we call those sister chromatids to each other because they should be identical copies. Uh, we want to tie them as identical copies, as we'll see in just a minute, because then when we split it up, we can send one copy to one future cell and the other copy to the other cell. So it's a convenient way to make sure we, we distribute the chromosomes equally to the new cells. Once they split up, we can kind of consider them separate chromosomes. Um, technically, they haven't unpacked yet, although once they really separate from each other, they pretty quickly unpack after that back to chromatin form. Okay, um, a, another reminder that at least in our body cells and in, in pretty much all eukaryotic organisms, um, their body cells are diploid for the there are some exceptions to that, but we won't worry about that. And diploid means that they have two of each of the chromosomes. Remember that in sexual reproduction, you get one of each chromosome from dad and one of each from mom. So your chromosomes come in these homologous pairs. Um, uh, so you have like two chromosome number ones and two chromosome number eights, for example. 
Um, and so an abbreviation for a diploid cell that always has homologous pairs is a 2N. So sometimes we use that as an abbreviation to say like, we're gonna work with an example where the diploid number is 46 for us humans, for example, or in just a minute, we're gonna work with a, a species where the diploid number is eight. And so we just use that as a simple way of saying, you know, if you've got two of everything, you're a diploid cell and you have homologous pairs. To make sure you're clear about homologous pairs and sister chromatids, let me show you this, this um, uh, more detailed example. Um, so here are homologous pairs maybe that haven't been copied yet. Remember that homologous pairs are the same size and they should carry the same genes in the same location, but they might be slightly different versions of the gene or they might have different alleles, right? Because remember, you get one from dad, one from mom, and mom and dad aren't exactly the same. So sometimes they might give you the same allele, but sometimes not, All right? So homologous pairs can be a little different from each other. Um, and then when we see the X's, those are not homologous pairs. Those are sister chromatids to each other. So sister chromatids are tied together, okay? These are also sister chromatids to each other. Um, and uh, they are tied together and barring mutation, which is rare, they should be identical to each other. These, however, are still homologous pairs to each other. Okay, so I just I need you to see the, the clear difference between sister chromatids tied together, X's, and homologous pairs never tied together might be a little different in terms of what alleles they carry. Okay, so let's walk through the whole cell cycle then. Once we got all these terms down, let's uh, uh, work with a species where the diploid number is eight. So eight total chromosomes. You can also think of that as four pairs, right? You either have four pairs of shoes in your closet or eight total shoes. So we need to make sure that our N cells both have eight chromosomes in them, four pairs. So um, what do we do? We copy everything in the S phase of interphase. Technically, they should still be unpacked as chromatin, but it's hard for me to show that. I'm actually gonna show them as Xs here when they're copying as well. Remember that we don't actually see the Xs until early mitosis. So let's pretend now that we've proceeded through G1, S, copied the DNA, G2. Now we're in mitosis, or M, and we actually see them packed up now in sister chromatid form, although they really aren't organized yet. There are little, gonna be little centrosomes that build spindle fibers that start to connect with all of my uh, guys and start to um, uh, give them a road. As it turns out, there are little motor proteins inside on both sides that once the spindle fibers connect with them can kind of help uh, them walk and, and organize them in the middle of the cell. So in mitosis, you pack up, line up. In mitosis, you're gonna line them up in one straight line. Big difference from meiosis coming up, okay? One straight line. Um, you always line them up to split them symmetrically. So in this case, you'd split right down the middle, like so. The motor proteins actually walk the, chromat the chromosomes apart. You don't actually pull them apart um, from the poles of the cell. Um, and once you walk them apart sufficiently, they should be unpacking to chromatin form, which I'm not going to show here. The nucleus actually reforms, which I'm not showing here either. And in cytokinesis, you eventually um, split up that one cell into two separate cells. Notice that each cell has eight chromosomes in it, four pairs, and it should be genetically identical to the original cell I showed. So by basically just separating the sister chromatids after you line them up in one straight line, you can guarantee that you get identical cells to what you started with. So in this video, we kind of showed the major steps of the cell cycle and we showed the major forms of chromosomes.